Hello and welcome to this video on the hexadecimal system of numbers. So in our previous videos, we've already talked about decimal numbers, binary numbers, and octal numbers. And today we're adding the hexadecimal system to our number systems that we're examining in these videos. So firstly, just as a bit of a recap, the decimal system of numbers is to the base 10. And that means that there's 10 possible digits available to us, 0 to 9, before we start entering into the territory of double digits. And in the octal system of numbers, we have 8 digits available to us, 0 to 7, before entering double digits, as we can see there. The hexadecimal system has 16 possible digits available to us. And these are 0 all the way through to F. So you can see here that we have 0 all the way through to 9, much as we do in the decimal number of systems. But then to total 16, we add these extra terms A, B, C, D, E, and F, which correspond with 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, respectively. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can convert between hexadecimal numbers and numbers in different number systems. But before we do that, let's just talk briefly about why hexadecimal numbers are important. When we looked at the octal system of numbers, we talked about how the reason octal numbers are commonly used is because they have the advantage of only requiring three binary bits to express them. If you have a look down the binary column all the way up to the number 7 here, we can see that the first bit of our binary term is always 0. And so actually, we could, if we wanted to, remove all of these terms and just express those seven or eight rather eight octal digits by using three binary bits for each. The decimal system of numbers is only separated from the octal system of numbers by these two extra digits eight and nine. But the problem is by introducing these two extra digits we've also had to introduce these extra bits in our binary term. We have to express our numbers using 4-bit binary terms rather than just 3 bits. So the octal system of numbers is a little bit more compact when it comes to expressing things in terms of, of binary bits. And for that reason, it was often used in computing because it's much more efficient to express our terms in terms of 3 bits rather than in 4. So it's better to just lose these two, um, these two digits 8 and 9 and make do with the octal system. The hexadecimal system, on the other hand, has 16 possible digits. And for that reason, we are going to use 4-bit binary combinations. But it means that we can take advantage of all of these different combinations, rather than just these extra two. It's not very practical to move to 4 bits just to have two more possible uh, two more possible numbers in our decimal system. But it is practical to move to four bits if we get all 16. Um, it's worth the while to do that. And so for that reason, the hexadecimal system capitalizes on four bit binary combinations by using all of these combinations and getting the benefit of using four bits in our combinations. Let's start with something very easy, which is converting a hexadecimal number to a binary number. And we're going to use this table to help us do so. So here we have an example of a hexadecimal number, and it's EC12. And next to it, I've just written the base number of 16. So our hexadecimal numbers are to the base of 16. We'll talk more about what that means later on. Um, but I've just put that little 16 in a subscript there to remind us that this is a hexadecimal number. Converting to binary is very easy because all we're going to do is we're going to refer to the table for each 
uh, digit in our binary, in our, sorry, in our hexadecimal number. So first of all, our first digit is E. And if we have a look down our table here, E corresponds with these four binary bits, 1110. So our number is going to start with 1110. Then we have C. If you refer to the table again, you can see that C corresponds with 1100. So I'm going to add that to our term here. Then we have the number 1. So as a hexadecimal number 1 corresponds with 0, 0, 0, 1. We'll add that on there. And then finally 2. And that corresponds with 0, 0, 1, 0. And so it's very easy, hopefully you can see, to correspond um, using the table these hexadecimal digits with their equivalent binary bits using these four bit combinations. Let's have a look at an example of the reverse process. So here I have a binary number and I've marked it again with a base of two just to remind us that it's a binary number. But here's our string of binary bits and we're going to convert that into a hexadecimal number. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to break this up into um, combinations of four digits and we're going to start from the decimal point or where the decimal point would be in our number. So our number ends uh, at the end here so we're going to suppose that there's a decimal point at the end as it were um, on the right hand side and we're going to start grouping in groups of four from that point onwards and so here we have a group of four digits there 0101 zero, one, zero, one. We've got a 1100, we've got a 1101, and we've got another 1101. So referring to our table, 1101 corresponds with D as a hexadecimal number. Another 1101 is the same. 1100 corresponds with C. And 0101 corresponds with 5. And so we can say that our number there is equivalent to D, D, C, 5 to the base of 16 because it's a hexadecimal number. Let's have a look at one more example down here. And we're going to do the same thing again. But one question you might be asking yourself is why do we start grouping from where we imagine the decimal point would be on the on the right hand side why do we start our groupings from right to left what difference does it make we could easily just start from left to right well let's see why that's the case in this particular example because we have here starting from the right we have a group of four here one 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 zero we've got a group here of one one zero zero we've got a group here of zero zero one one but then we run into trouble because we only have two binary bits uh, remaining on the end. Uh, there's an easy fix for this. It's simply the case that we've trimmed some zeros and we can add these back on. We're allowed to add um, zeros on at the very beginning of our number without changing the value of that number. So now we have a group of four and we can complete that. So 0011, zero, zero, if you refer to the table, corresponds with 3. 0, 0, 1, 1 again gives us another 3. Uh, 1, 1, 0, 0 corresponds with C. And 1, 1, 1, 0 corresponds with E. And so we have 3, 3, C, E to the base of 16 once that's been converted. So we've mentioned the base of 16 a few times, and we're just going to explore what that means um, when we convert our hexadecimal numbers to decimal numbers or ordinary numbers that we're familiar with every day. So let's take an example and say that we have the hexadecimal number B19. And again, just to remind us that it's a hexadecimal number, I'll just put that 16 as a subscript. So when we say that a number has the base of 16, it means that each of our 
digits in our term is multiplied by 16 raised to an increasing power. So starting with the least significant digit, which is the digit to the right, we have a number that's multiplied by 16 to the power 0. Then our next digit is multiplied by 16 to the power 1. Our next digit is multiplied by 16 to the power 2. And if we had more digits, to the power 3, to the power 4, and so on. So let's write that out in full so that it makes a little bit more sense. We can say that our term here is b times 16 to the power 2 plus 1 times 16 to the power 1 plus 9 times 16 to the power 0. So when we look at this, we need to remind ourselves, first of all, that b corresponds with 11. So in fact, I'll make that change here um, by referring to that table. We have 11 times 16 to the power 2, which gives us 2816. We have 1 times 16 to the power 1. Well, 16 to the power 1 is just 16, and 1 times 16 is 16. And then we have 9 times 16 to the power 0. Anything to the power 0 is 1. So really, we have 9 times 1, which is 9. And adding those together, we have 2,841. And that's a decimal number now. So I'll write that to the base of 10. Let's have another, uh, another example. Let's say we have F26 to the base of 16. And so we can say that that is equal to um, f times 16 squared. Well, f, remember, corresponds with the number 15, if you refer back to that table. So it's 15 times 16 to the power 2 plus 2 times 16 to the power 1 plus 6 times 16 to the power 0. And when we work all that out, we have 3,840 plus 32 plus 6, giving us a total of 3,878. And again, that's a decimal number now to the base of 10. So hopefully you can see by expanding out our numbers like shown, Always remembering that our least significant digit is raised to the power of zero. So this rightmost digit will be raised to the power zero and to the power one, to the power two, and so on. If we expand in that manner, then we can easily convert our hexadecimal numbers to decimal numbers. The reverse process of converting a decimal number into a hexadecimal number is just a little bit more complicated, unfortunately. Uh, but we're going to see a couple of examples. It involves dividing our number by 16 and doing that again and again, each time taking the remainder from our division. So we're not going to go too much into detail in this video about how to find the remainder. In our last video, which was on octal numbers, we talked more about how to find the remainder um, effectively using a few different methods and if you're not sure it's probably worth going back and watching that video but what we're going to do is go through a couple of quick examples here using a very similar method to the method that we used in that last video so let's say that we have um, let's say the number 30 and that's 30 to the base 10 it's just a normal decimal number and we're going to convert that into a hexadecimal number. So the first step is to divide that number by 16. So we're going to divide by 16. And what we find is that when we're doing our division, we're looking for an integer result. So we're looking for a whole number result. And whatever's left over from our division 
is going to be our remainder. And it's the remainder that we're interested in, actually. So 30 divided by 16 will only give 1 with a remainder of 14. So in our last video, we talked about either using modulo calculators or just a normal scientific calculator to find the remainder effectively. But essentially, we can't divide 30 by 16 and get a whole number result unless we take 14 out as a remainder. And taking 14 away from 30, we're just left with 16 divided by 16 to give us 1 as an integer. So it's the remainder that we're interested in here, this remainder 14. And 14 in our hexadecimal system corresponds with the letter E. And so our first digit in our hexadecimal um, number, I'll just put this on the right here, is going to be E. So now that we've dealt with that, all that remains is this number 1. And number 1 doesn't, re doesn't divide by anything. Um, no matter what the remainder is, to give us a whole number integer. It certainly doesn't divide by 16 to give us an integer. And so 1 simply becomes our last term here. So the 1, and I'll just mark this on, the 1 doesn't divide by anything, no matter what the remainder is, and so we're just left with 1 as our final term. So notice when we're constructing our hexadecimal numbers, we're moving from least significant digit on the right to the most significant digit on the left. As it stands, though, our digits only going to be uh, our numbers going only going to be two digits long, and we can see that thirty to the base of ten corresponds with one e to the base of sixteen. Let's have a look at one more simple example. And we'll say that we want to convert the number 250. Um, which is to the base 10. We want to convert 250 to a hexadecimal number. And so again, our first step is to divide by 16. And when we divide by 16, our result is 15 with remainder 10. So 250 doesn't divide by 16 to give us a whole number, but 240 does. So we've taken 10 out as our remainder, and we've divided by 16 to get our integer result of 15. So 10, this remainder, remember, is, is the number that we're interested in. 10 is going to be the least significant digit in our new hexadecimal number. And 10, remember, corresponds with the hexadecimal digit of A. So again, our first digit on the right-hand side of our number is going to be A. The next step again is to divide by 16. Well, we're left with 15. And 15, no matter what remainder we take out, 15 won't divide by 16 to give us a whole number. And so we're just left with that 15 as our final as our final digit. 15 corresponds in the hexadecimal system with F. And so here on the right-hand side, we have F as our last digit. So here we see 250 to the base 10 corresponds with FA to the base of 16. So those were just a few simple examples, but I hope you found this video useful, first of all to introduce the hexadecimal system of numbers, and then to see how we can convert between hexadecimal, binary, and decimal numbers as well.